Gender equality is a human right, but it is also a question of the efficiency and quality of public services. This film shows how gender mainstreaming can benefit not only individuals, but also municipalities, county councils, and others who deliver publicly funded services. It snows in Sweden, and after the snow falls, the municipality ploughs the streets and squares so that we can get through. What does this have to do with gender equality? Well, women walk, cycle, and use public transport to a greater extent than men, who travel more by car. This means that municipal snow removal has different consequences for men and for women. This is a form of gender inequality that we can put into figures. Three times more pedestrians than motorists are injured in single vehicle accidents caused by icy roads. Most of them are women. Hospital care and lost productivity due to accidents in slippery conditions costs four times as much as winter road maintenance. In Karlskoga municipality, city officials analysed local snow removal from a gender perspective and found that typically male areas were prioritised. First, the ring roads were cleared, usually late at night when only a few trucks were passing through. Then, the major roads and streets were cleared, especially those leading to larger male-dominated workplaces. Last to be cleared were bus stops, pedestrian walkways and bike paths. In other words, the municipality was prioritising snow removal for men above snow removal for women. This was not intentional, of course. They were just doing things the way they had always been done. To solve the problem, the municipality had to rethink its approach. Three inches of snow are harder to get through on foot than in a car. So it was decided the pedestrian walkways and bike paths should be cleared before the streets. Infant schools were now given first priority because that's where parents go first on the way to work. Larger workplaces were given second priority, but this time female-dominated workplaces such as hospitals and municipal facilities were also included. Pedestrian walkways and bike paths leading to schools were given priority three. Only when this essential network had been made accessible were the remaining streets and roads cleared of snow. Working in this order resulted in no extra costs for the municipality, but it did make the allocation of resources more gender equal. It also made the city more accessible for everyone, especially children, for whom driving is not an option. Gender equality means that women and men enjoy the same rights, obligations and opportunities. How municipalities and county councils shape their activities is of course very important for equality between women and men. The Council of European Municipalities and Regions, CEMR, believes it is at the level of municipalities and county councils that an equal society can best be created because of their proximity to people's everyday lives. Gender equality is a right of citizens, but it can also be of utility for municipalities and county councils. Just as gender equality in snow removal can prevent suffering and costs due to accidents in slippery conditions, gender mainstreaming can raise quality in all services. A key tool in this work is gender desegregated statistics. It is only when we reveal how decisions, actions and treatment affect women and men that we can detect differences and do something about them. Here are some concrete examples. Many women in Kalmar avoided taking the bus home in the evening. The reason was that they felt unsafe walking home from the bus stop. This was shown in a survey. The solution was to introduce so-called night stops, 
which means that passengers can ask the bus driver to be let off at a specific place, even between normal stops. The driver will only open the front door and makes sure that no one else gets off at the same time. This has made nighttime bus travel safer and more attractive for both women and men. The ambulance service at Salgrinska University Hospital in Gothenburg some years ago began compiling gender disaggregated statistics. They discovered that three out of four patients with hip fractures were women over the age of 85. The women had to wait longer for an ambulance and received less pain relief than the men. For this reason, they often were in worse condition than the men when they arrived at the hospital. New care routines were introduced. Emergency dispatch personnel began giving women the same priority as men, and all patients received equal pain relief in the ambulance. Paramedics began carrying out tasks previously only performed at the emergency department so that arriving patients could be taken directly to radiology. Now patients get to the operating room more quickly. This has resulted in fewer patients suffering delirium, which shortens their stay at hospital and reduces suffering, especially for the women. Boys get lower grades than girls in almost all school subjects. Freya school in Gnesta was no exception. When looking into what boys should be like, it was found they expected each other not to study hard and to treat school as unimportant. Instead, they sought status by shoving each other in the corridors and being good at sports. They were noisy and took up a lot of space. Even the teachers didn't expect the boys to put as much effort into their schoolwork as the girls. A health survey showed that the girls felt more stress at school, enjoyed their leisure time less, and felt less safe outdoors at night. To improve the boys' school performance and reduce the girls' feelings of stress and insecurity, the school started a systematic campaign to change norms and attitudes by increasing teachers' knowledge about norms that inhibit girls and boys in their schoolwork, introducing zero tolerance of boys fighting, even when only for fun, implementing non-critical pedagogy among students, integrating sex and relationships education into subjects, such as Swedish and civics. The work with norms has produced good results. Previously, the boys at Freya School performed below the national average, but in 2012, almost 80% of the boys finishing ninth grade had achieved the targets for all subjects, the same proportion as the girls. However, the work must continue. New teachers must also be educated about norms, and efforts to change boys' attitudes towards school and reduce girls' feelings of stress and insecurity are continuing. A lot of good work has been done over the years to promote gender equality in municipalities and county councils. However, if one compares an organisation with a house, you could say that gender equality work has often been consigned to the garden shed. It has been carried out in separate projects without any real impact on day-to-day -day activities. Gender mainstreaming is about moving gender equality into the house. It is only when we achieve a gender equality perspective in day-to-day -day activities that we can offer women and men equivalent, high-quality services. Gender equality is created and maintained where we make decisions, allocate resources and create standards. Therefore, it is in the regular decision-making and in day-to-day -day activities that we have to combat gender inequality. That's what's meant by gender mainstreaming. It means making men and women visible in policy documents at all target levels, from the most wide-ranging plans to concrete operations to work plans. We're talking about gendering management. Writing men and women makes it possible to set gender equal objectives, paving the way for monitoring and illustrating gender differences. 
there is a difference between writing students and writing girls and boys in school, or between writing the elderly and elderly women and men. When you include gender among your monitoring tools, you get a deeper analysis and can detect quality issues that were previously unknown simply because the tools for analysis were too blunt. In this way, gender mainstreaming leads to bonuses like increased legal protection and quality control. When control and monitoring are functioning as they should, you can track a decision through the entire organisation. There is a common thread running from decisions of the assembly, through the municipal boards and the administration to the everyday work in the field. That is to say, if the assembly sets the goal of providing equivalent and high quality services for women and men, it can be achieved. But the reverse is also true. If the assembly does not consider it a goal, it will almost certainly not happen. Gender mainstreaming means applying a gender perspective to all our day-to-day -day activities, to snow removal, ambulance transport, classroom teaching, and all the other services that we deliver on behalf of the citizens. Through gender mainstreaming, we can improve our management of governance structures. We ensure that waiting times, allocation of resources, and how people are treated are all based on individual needs, without being distorted by prejudice, ignorance, or routines. It's about justice for women and men, girls and boys, but it's also about efficiency and quality. To learn more about Sala's support for gender equality work, please visit www.skl.se. Jamstelt hat.